Why, hello there, everyone. How's it going? It's time to talk about daily and weekly overtime calculations. Um, I've been asked to do this a few years ago, and then I got asked again today, and it, it caused me to go and dig up an old, um, an old payroll type file that I have that helps you figure out whether or not you have daily or um, weekly hours that your employer should be paying you. Because a lot of times when you're an employee, um, you see a pay stub that you're given at the end of the pay period. And it's a really complex calculation to figure out if your hours, uh, depending on how many you worked in a day, whether or not you could have gotten paid more if those hours were looked at on a weekly basis or a pay period basis instead of just a daily basis. So there's this difference between calculating overtime and double time. Um, one way of looking at it is day by day, and we have all the formulas to do that in here. The other way to look at it is by week and how many hours you go over 40 in a week because there are different laws. So this is such a complicated calculation that it's not standard. There aren't very many resources to kind of show you how to code this yourself because it is so complicated. But I do have a file that does it, and we're going to talk about it today and kind of talk about what to look out for if you're looking about how, how much are you getting paid and are you able to check it. So um, this is a standard addition now into the payroll and Excel package, as well as payroll and Google Sheets. So if you'd like to purchase a copy, it's $100 and you get access to both of those files for whatever you need. And if you need this added into it, uh, I can supply this as an addendum to that because it's extremely process heavy. So it's something you kind of want to use to check your employees and get their hours correctly, but you might not want to incorporate it specifically in the major file. It's kind of up to you. It depends on how big your business is. But let's talk about how to do it first. First of all, um, when you're entering in, in information for an employee, um, I've done a lot of videos about what you need to gather, but let's just assume you've gathered everything you need about your employee's status and W-4s and whatever else like that. So you just have their name here. OK, so this interface, this daily entry interface is actually pretty easy to use. You just need to choose the name of the employee. And, and I want you to use just one employee at a time with this. You, you don't even want to have more than one employee in here because it's complicated. The formula is so complicated. You don't want to mix employees. You just want to do this check on an employee for a pay period uh, or a cycle and then see if it's correct. So you, you choose a date. Let's say it was the 26th of January. You're going to put some time in, whatever time they came in, a.m., p.m., um, what time did they leave. Let's say they had a really, really long day here for some reason, um, and they took an hour and 15-minute break. We'll call it 75-minute break. Um, as you can see here, there are all kinds of errors. <laughs> that hold on 9 45 p.m there we go sorry i didn't type in the time right you can see you'll get a bunch of errors if you don't type in the time correctly and put a semicolon or a colon uh in am or pm after here so this person here this is a 14 hour workday. all these formulas here are calculating how many hours um raw hours the person worked what the pay period was that was related to this what week it was, because there are different weeks in the year, what day of the week it was, because if you work seven days in a row uh, full time, the Sunday is always paid double time in certain instances, like in California, where this, this file is set up for California. So there are a lot of different rules, and all these formulas are going to calculate what you need to know to know what's a daily hour or a weekly hour. And then you get to make a decision about which one you want to use. So we just showed how you enter in the time information. Okay, that's all you have to do in this daily entry sheet. Then you go over to the OT hours comparison pivot and you refresh inside here. Right click and refresh. Now you've got all your data feeding this information, but it's still not done yet. You now need to choose what pay period you're looking at. So let's look at pay period 130, because that's what we were working on. And look at what happens. And we'll go over everything that it says here. For pay period 130, this pivot table is showing you everything you need to know to be able to figure out whether you want to use daily overtime or weekly overtime calculations. It's showing you that for employee Ken Braverman, it's saying that their week five and six were a part of this pay period that ended 130. This is for a bi-weekly payer. That's what this is set up for right now is someone that pays every two weeks. 
And it's saying within that, that two week cycle, there were two actual seven day weeks. Those two weeks are broken out to show you what is happening here. It's saying, for example, during week five, that three days were worked here. The 20th, the 21st, and the 22nd, there are 9.25 hours or nine hours and 15 minutes that are being distributed on each day. And it's distributing eight of them as regular hours and 1.25 as daily OT hours. Okay, that makes sense, right? It's a 9.25 hour day. Eight, anything after eight hours is considered daily overtime when you're calculating daily overtime. So that's where you get this, right? So that's kind of easy and simple to do, right? Just the daily overtime is just looking at what it is more than eight hours per day. And if it was more than 12 hours in a day, that residual over 12 hours would be called double time, which, which there isn't any here. Now, so that's the daily part, but what about the weekly part, right? And why is there a three here? Like, wh why are there three, only three weekly regular hours and 23 weekly OT hours? What is going on here? Well, here's why. So this week five that only has three days in it in this pay period of the pay period ending 130, that week had four other days in it. I wanna show you. Week five bled over two different pay periods. So these are the other days related to week five. And guess what? You end up hitting your weekly overtime threshold very, very fast. You already had 37 hours worked in this week because apparently you worked on the 16th, the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th. So in this, in this version, the week starts on a Sunday and ends on a Saturday. So day number one of the week is Sunday. Well, so that, that's briefly the difference about how you end up with something that's different under weekly overtime calculation than daily. Because um, like right there, I mean, this, this is showing it to you. It's showing you that, that a lot of these hours are essentially weekly overtime hours that would not be considered overtime if you only looked at this one pay period at a time. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about is that as an employee, you can get finagled, one could say, when the payroll provider is only calculating this by pay period and not using the weekly overtime method. Because had you worked a bunch in a previous pay period and then you start the next pay period, you're almost automatically earning weekly overtime hours at the beginning of that pay period because you've worked so much the same week in a previous pay period. So I hope that kind of explains how there'll be differences because up here, it shows you what those differences are by pay period when you look at this by pay period. So on this 130 pay period that we're looking at, you can see that um, if you calculate this by daily overtime, it's only 77.25 billable total hours, essentially. Those are regular hours and then the overtime hours are multiplied by one and a half and the double time hours are multiplied by two to get this raw allocated hour hours total. So it might not have been 77.25 hours work. It's maybe it's it's actually um, it's actually uh, all hours should be distributed. It's actually only 69.5 actual hours worked, but it's 77.25 billable hours because you have some overtime or some double time in there, right? Same thing with the weekly overtime calculation. There's only 69.5 hours worked, but you're gonna get paid for 83.38. And there's a reason there's a check mark here instead of an X is saying as the employee, which one do you want to be paid? Do you want to be paid $1,667 or do you want to be paid $1,545? I think you know the answer. You want to get paid more. And if you didn't have something to provide you with this to check the allocations and to check the hours properly, you'd be getting shorted $122.50 at gross compensation. So this is the application that does that. It is unbelievably complicated for just something that enters in hours. Um, and it gets even more complicated if you work over midnight and the shift bleeds over in two days. I had another version that did that, but I removed that capability in this one simply because it's so complicated. So if you just work in a calendar day, it's really helpful because when you start bleeding over calendar days, you get a whole nother coding situation. So I can do it both ways, but this one's a simpler one that allows you to just put in hours on a normal calendar day and keep track of your overtime. 
But that's basically how it works. So whenever you keep refreshing this pivot table, you're going to be able to see which, whether the daily or the weekly is the one that you wanted to use and what the difference in compensation actually would be. And sometimes the daily is better than the weekly. So don't assume the weekly is always going to be better. In this first instance, it's the daily one that actually is better. In the other instances, it's the weekly one that's more hours. So you can totally mess around and put all your information right in here. All right, guys, that's weekly versus daily overtime. It's a complicated subject, but here in Excel and payroll in Excel, we make things easy. That's what we do. So we're going to keep doing that and uh, may all your hours be paid.